Here is a diagram of what we are going to set up in this video. And let's start by setting up the Olama server. To download and install Olama, come over to olama.com, click the download button, and download the appropriate version for your OS. For me, this is Mac OS. From this point forward, I'm just going to show you how I did this on my Mac. So I click the download for Mac OS button and it downloaded this zip file. So after you have that downloaded, you unzip the zip file and drag the resulting application into your applications folder. Then you launch the Olama application and accept all of the permission dialogues. And then you'll be presented with this little wizard. Click next, click install. I have to put in my account password and click finish and that's it. Then should be able to type olama b on the command line. Also note how we can start and stop olama via this llama icon in the menu bar. To start olama, you launch it just like you would launch any other application. When olama is running, you should see this little llama icon in your menu bar. As Olama is a command line tool, you'll need to pop open a shell to use it. Here's an overview of some of Olama's commands. I hope you find these intuitive. In regards to the model IDs, I personally love this table on the Olama GitHub repo that shows some of the more used models that people like to run along with their IDs. It's not of particular relevance to this video, but just know that the full list of models that Olama supports stretches well into the hundreds and even includes models from outside of Llama's ecosystem. But anyways, focus. To keep things light, we will run one of the smallest models that Olama offers, that being Llama 3.2 1B Instruct FP16. The 3.2 tells us the family of models it was released with. The 1B tells us the amount of parameters that the model has. The Instruct tells us that the model was fine-tuned for performing instructions. And the FP16 does get a bit technical, but tells us that when the model generates text, the internal calculations are performed using numbers with up to four decimal places. If I'm wrong about this FP16 detail, please leave a comment. You can think of the number of parameters as a rough indication of how many simulated brain cells a model has. The more parameters or brain cells, then the smarter the model will be, assuming it's been trained on a sufficient amount of data, that is. I don't want to get bogged down in excessive detail, but what I'm trying to highlight here is that depending on training details, a smaller model can outperform a larger one in certain cases. If you're interested in learning more about how AI training works, I suggest watching this video entitled What is PyTorch? The Unofficial Movie or researching topics like neural networks and backpropagation as a starting point. To use a particular model with Olama, enter the Olama run command followed by the model's ID. As a rough guideline, you'll need about 8 gigs of RAM for running models with about 7 billion parameters, about 16 gigs of RAM for running models with about 13 billion parameters, and about 32 gigs of RAM for running models with about 33 billion parameters. The model we're using in this video only has 1 billion parameters, so it should work on just about any computer. Olama supports interactive sessions with the models you run and also in the background serves an API. To see the logs of the Olama API, open up a new terminal and type this command, tail-f followed by the path to the Olama server logs. And move this over here like this. And back in the original terminal, we can curl the Olama API by closing this interactive session and sending curl statements like so. There are other ways to use Olama, so feel free to experiment, but hopefully this gives you a great gist of how it works. Now that we have Olama running, let's run a Llama stack server. We're going to run Llama Stack using Docker, which is a tool that makes running all sorts of different types of software super easy. Fun fact, it appears that the CEO of Olama, Jeffrey Morgan, worked as a product manager at Docker for almost five years. If you don't have Docker installed, come over to docker.com and download the appropriate version for your machine. For me, this is Apple Silicone. 
and after the download completes, open it and drag the docker.app icon into your applications folder. I've already done this, so I'll click stop, but that's it, it's that easy. In order to launch Docker, you simply open the Docker application just like you would open any other application. When Docker is running, you should see this whale icon in your top menu bar. After Docker is set up, here are the steps for how to run a Llama Stack server. First, let's create an empty folder somewhere on our computer. I'm calling mine Llama Stack Agent Ops, and let's enter this folder we just created and open it with our code editor. Next, let's add a YAML file that will allow us to configure how Llama Stack works. So I'm going to create a file called run.yaml. And let's populate this run.yaml file with the following content that I adapted from the Olama example found in Llama Stack's GitHub repo. Here is the content that we will paste into this run.yaml. And just so you can see what it looks like, here we are. Llama Stack is an SDK that provides common functionality for building agentic applications like tool calling and memory modules, for example. Llama Stack relies on a separate service for powering the LLM. Inside of Llama Stack's GitHub repo, you'll see examples for how to plug Llama Stack into LLM endpoints powered by AWS Bedrock, Hugging Face, as well as Fireworks. But in the name of freedom, liberty, and everything America stands for, we are going to be using Olama for powering our LLM. Okay, so here's how we do this. First, we have to make sure Olama is running. Then we can pop open the terminal and type the Olama PS command to see what models are being served. And we can see that no models are currently being served. And if we type this Olama command, Olama run followed by the model ID, we're also going to include a flag that says keep alive 60 minutes that will keep the model running for an hour after we close the interactive session that by default Olama presents to us when we run a model. So I'm running this command. Here we see the interactive session. Model's running. And if we close the interactive session by typing control D and type the Olama PS command again, we can see that the model will be served for another hour. Now we can run this Docker command to run a Llama stack server powered by this Olama model. If you look closely, at this Docker command, you'll see we're including two environment variables, and these are the environment variables that plug Llama Stack into Olama. Here you can see we're telling Llama Stack to find Olama at this URL. And this is a little confusing, but this is how it works. The model ID that you want to use is different in Llama Stack compared to the same model's ID in Olama. So this model, Llama 3.21B Instruct FP16, has this model ID in Llama stack. So after you run this Docker command, we should have a running Llama stack. Okay, that looks good. And we can smoke test this by popping open a second terminal and hitting the Llama Stack API's health check endpoint. And we see the status is okay. Let's now run two more quick tests so you get a feel for what using Llama Stack is like. If you've done any AI agent development at all, you should find this very familiar. So first, you'll need Python installed. I'm using Python 3.13. And 
Next up, let's create a virtual environment so that we can install packages into our project without affecting any other Python projects on our system. And if that command works, you should see a VM folder at the root of the project. Let's activate our virtual environment like so. And create a requirements.txt file. And add these packages and package versions into the requirements.txt. And then we can install these packages with the pip install command. And when the installation process has finished, let's add a file called simple inference.py. And here is the code we'll put in this simple inference.py file. Hopefully this should look very familiar. You can see all we're doing here is pointing this code to the Llama stack API running on port 5001. This is the model ID we'd like to use. And this is the prompt that we're going to send via code, right? A three word poem about the moon. So let's run this script and see what happens. Silent lunar glow. And for this second quick example, let's show how to use LlamaStack's agent class. We're going to build an agent that has one tool. And that one tool will be the ability to use the Brave Browser API. So we'll need to add a .env file to our project that will include an entry for holding our Brave Browser API key. You can provision an API key on the Brave Search API console. You can sign up for here. Once you have that API key provision, copy it into your project. And in order to make these API keys available to our code, we're going to need to install Python dot env and after the installation completes let's create a file called simple agent and populate this simple agent.py file with the following code here you can see we're plugging into the llama stack api on port 5001 here's the model id we're going to use here's where we configure the agent and this is the prompt that we're going to send to our agent. Who won the NBA championship in 2020? Please use tools. So let's run this and see what happens. And that is the right answer. It was the Lakers. So hopefully you have a great idea or a great gist, at least, of what Llama Stack is all about.